today's video is another episode of pine needle basket making with Deborah Carmona and we're going to work on our finishing edge which is this top wrap, wrapped row that you can't see the beginning or the end it's very smooth I'm going to teach you how I do that feature it's a lovely fall day and the weather is so nice, I decided to sit outside to work a basket. While the shade is on the front porch in the morning, it's really the only time I can enjoy the front porch before it gets too hot. So I'll take advantage of the morning hours. Hello, this is Deborah Carmona, and today I'm going to sh show you how to do a finishing edge on our basket. Now this basket is a continuous circle so that you have a very smooth finish and you can't find the beginning or the end, which is a feature that I love to do in my baskets. Even in the beginning when I start off my basket, I start off with a continuous circle and I taper my starts and stops so it's very difficult to find the beginning and the end wherever I transition from one color to the other or for the basket. So if you want to learn how to do that kind of a finish, stay tuned. So I just finished this little basket. Um, not even sure what my plan was with it. I just chose natural colors. I, I have the dark which these needles are treated with glycerin and these I left natural. I just wanted to go with the browns and I finished it off as you can see and I'm pretty satisfied with it but I feel like it needs a finishing edge. When I start I have a continuous circle. I try to disguise the beginning and the end as best as I can. It's just one of the things that I'm kind of particular with. I hate abrupt starts and stops. When I got to here, I tapered my ends. I don't know if you can tell. This row right here, half of it is dark brown and half of it is light. So I tapered where I joined them together. And then where I finished it off, you can see that this edge right here got skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. So I try to keep it fairly level. There's a slight dip right there. And see that I don't even like that little dip. So I want to hide it. Now you're saying, well, what do you do now? You've finished it off completely. You don't have any pine needles sticking out. Well, that's what I'm going to show you today, how I'm going to put a finished wrapped row. I think since I went with darks to light, I thought it would be nice to finish it off with the this brown color, it's sort of a light brown color, um, of artificial sinew. I think that would be a good finish to the edge. Many ways to finish off the basket. You can do something decorative and add beads, or you can use a color, a pattern. These are, this is three wrapped rows, and um, I'm quite proud of this basket. This basket won a blue ribbon state fair so I can say that I am an award-winning basket maker with this basket. Sometimes I dye my own needles and sometimes I buy them online. Um, this is green and this is like a cherry red and this is just natural. These are long. You can see how long they are. Um, these are longleaf pine needles from Florida. The, the further south you go, the longer you can get the needles. But I have, a, I have so many needles, oh my goodness. I'm, I'm overflowing with needles from the I've collected and the I've colored. Now to prepare, I get my needles that have three pieces to them and they still have the caps on. I leave the caps on when I store my needles because I might someday use them. I'm going to snip off the ends 
I have my straw that I use to keep the gauge the size of the uh, coil. I'm going to start by packing the straw. This is a gauge that shows the different size holes and um, the typical one that I use is about that size. That size right there. Which is 920 seconds. It's just a straw. Oh, these are just leftover pieces from when I had cut off my sinew, my artificial sinew, and I needed a place to put them because they were already cut, so I just kind of wrap them around. When the straw moves very easily, it's too loose. Like, wait a second, but your basket looks finished already. And, and, and now you're gonna start with a whole new row? Exactly. I'm gonna start with a whole new row, which is gonna be the finishing row. Sometimes I will finish my basket off several times, depending on how I put it into it. Like if I do several different, if I wanna do a uh, one color wrapped row, and then I wanna do a different color wrapped row, but I want it to have that continuous circle. This is um, my method that I have developed. Okay, it's starting to get a little bit tight. I think I could put one more in. I don't want it so tight that I can't move it. Okay, so that, that's my gauge. I can move it, okay? But if I did one more, it'd be too tight, too compact. So this is gonna be the size of my gauge. And I'm gonna start, since this is an oval, I'm gonna start on one of these sides. And since this is the side that I started on before, I'm not gonna start on that side. I'm gonna start on this side. I always like to disguise the beginning and the end. It's just a just a thing with me. I don't like abrupt starts and stop. To me, it's so unnerving to my senses to have a abrupt line where one thing starts, next row, and it doesn't line up. I want them to line up like so. That's just just a, just a little thing that I prefer. Okay. Now, I gotta get my, I get it. Now I've only got two left, so I gotta cut a bunch more of those, and then I gotta get my thread ready. Okay, got my basket. I have my artificial sinew in the brown color. I did not split it since I'm going to be doing a wrapped row. I'll just use it full width. And I have my gauge, my straw, with my pine needles packed in it. Now, I do want to be able to wrap both of my ends together when I'm finished at the end. I use the uh, straw to hold it. Um, I'm, I want to get it started and I'm not even going to start it at the very end. I'm going to leave a bunch of things out there. But I want to um, get it started so I have it attached. And I don't have to start at the end. Because I actually want to leave some ends open on both ends. So that when I come around, I'll be able to put those ends together and join them. So I'm actually going to start kind of in the middle. I know that probably seems weird. But this is um, my method. Now, um, I need to start my thread, okay? First of all, I'm gonna hook my thread in here. Okay, let me attach that first. I need to get my thread attached. I'm, I'm not going into where the black thread is. I'm going into this color, because this is about the same color as that. And let me just get it started. Now, I'm gonna come back right through the coil because I want to have it held really good just so that I kind of lock it in place. See, I can hide this tail right here. I can hide it underneath right there. So, but I just want to secure my thread. 
I'm just going to go back through the coil just so I've got it very secure and it won't, won't pull out on me. Okay, it's sort of a knot. See, it's held very good. That's what I wanted. This little tail will get buried underneath the coil as I wrap. So just setting it on here and I'm going to start wrapping. I'm going to keep my straw to the left because I like to feed my needles from the left. I know other people like to do it the opposite way, but this is my preferred method. Now I am going to have to deal with this. This is going to be annoying to me because it's going to be hanging out. Um, that's why I don't like to have needles coming from, from the right. I prefer them coming from the left, but there's no other way to get around it here. Okay, so I'm going to just do a couple of wraps and then I'm going to secure it going under that between the coils because I need it to be held a bit. All right. Now I want to go over the top and back down the same place. Sorry. <laughs> It's hard to try to be in the camera and focus on what you're doing at the same time. Okay. I want to give a, a, what I call a locking stitch. So I go over it one more time and I'm going to come around like this and then I'm going to go around like that. So it is secure. You can see that it's holding on its own. Yeah, I started in the middle, <laughs> which is weird. Okay, now as I wrap a little ways, I'm going to wrap and I'll probably go to, to the right of each one of these. Um, I'm going to call these posts. Each one of these posts is I'm right to the right of it, not on top of it. I'm going to go ahead and do the connecting stitch. See how that little tail is right there? I'm making sure that I'm, I'm catching that so I can hide it. Now I have to move it around quite a bit because I'm reaching around the camera. I have the tripod standing between my legs. I'm not in the most comfortable position and I'm kind of leaning over the camera to hopefully give you a good view. I try to stay in the camera. Okay. Notice that these are not all at the same length. I got some that are further in and some sticking out and that's what I want. I want it to be varied because as I need I will be adding more and I don't want them all to stop at the same exact place. Okay, let's do one more. See how I take my thread and I pass it under the basket and I come up in this little gap here. See I use my left hand to hold the coil in the position that I want it. My right hand does all the work. Okay, I'm gonna go one more and then I take a stitch because I'm to the left of that dark colored stitch. So as I go down, I go between the two coils. I'm going below the previous coil. So I'll I'm lo we're looking at it upside down because that's how I look at it when I when I work on it. This is this coil that that's a sec the sec the, for the last coil that I did. So my needle goes between them. See it on this side, and we pull it through. And I like to use my finger to help hold and shape.
see my left hand does mostly the holding and now I come up here I'm gonna go over one more time and this passing under see how I'm holding the tension tight with my finger Oops, sorry and this is what I call the locking stitch but I can't go around because that stitch is in the way so I come over here on this side making sure that I come between the two coils because I don't want to break the coil I don't know, I use this full strength and it's really thick. I almost, maybe I should have split it in half because it seems awfully thick. One thing I do love about the artificial sinew though is that it's easy to untangle. Oh great, and I have a knot. Um, and it's easy to flatten out the stitches because they, okay, I forget which way, direction I'm going. like these you can flatten them out because the wax on them you can make them look smooth okay so you can see that it's attached with two two posts two locking stitches and I'm just going to continue around that that way and I will add more as needed but that's how we get it started I know it looks funny at the moment because we got this sticking out and I'm trying to avoid those. So let me do a little bit more. I'm trying to stay in the camera. But the thing is I have to avoid those too. So you have to move it all around a lot. Okay, I'm to the left of that side so now I can come between the coils okay so I went over the top come out under the second row and now I do my locking stitch the locking stitch is where I go over the top come up through here the whole time I'm keeping the tension on my thread and then I have to come into the right side of that stitch that locks it so that it doesn't slide to the left or to the right. One of the reasons I love the tie stitch, that's basically the tie stitch, the stitch that I did all of this, this is a tie stitch. I love the tie stitch because it's very sturdy and strong and it prevents your your coils from 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 slipping because if you don't do stitches properly um, that that because you're working in basically a circle a spiral you have that uh, sort of like a centrifugal force it wants to push out and so it's very important that when you do the locking stitch, you, you, you start on the left and then, then then you go in to the right of your post. So when you do your, your, your stitch that comes down, you want to go on the left side the first time and then the second time you go around, you go on the right side. That way you have secured it to this post right here. And that prevents it from sliding back and forth. There's nothing more frustrating than having a basket that you've put together start to slip over time and these things they want to kind of push out. And this is why I like the locking stitch, the, um, the tie stitch, which has that extra locking stitch on it. I know you're looking at it backwards, but you kind of get the idea how I lift the basket so my thread can go underneath. And this is um, showing you more realistically the the mode of operation. 
See how I look at the other side to put where to put my needle in? And I always look to where the needle comes out. I'm always watching both sides of the basket as I'm working. Now, I think it's, I can start putting some needles in. Because I want to gradually um, be making this get longer. I have to be conscious of this sticking out here, so I'm trying to avoid that. So I reach over and go under the basket, because that is just the easiest way. So you can see how I have to kind of move the basket in different positions to make this work good. Also, the needles are naturally straight, so we have to make sure we're getting a nice curve. So you have to watch your shape and don't pull it too tight. And check your shape as you come around here. And this is where the left hand has to keep an eye and hold things into position. When I put a needle in, I like to make sure that it's going to go all the way into right where right where I'm going to stitch next, and that way, I know that it's in there secure. I've decided to make this as a thank you gift for somebody who is inviting me to their Thanksgiving dinner to join their family. It's my daughter-in-law's um, parents. They've been so it's good friends to us and so gracious and we enjoy very much going out to their farm in the country and oh, I've always wanted to do something for her but I usually am so busy but this particular year I got a little extra time on my hands so I have the chance to make her a basket just as a way of saying thank you and I thought using the uh, harvest colors would be a good a good color theme to be fitting for a Thanksgiving dinner and then she can remember that she received it on Thanksgiving Day. Okay, let's put another See, I'm, see how I'm holding my thread nice and tight? I like to separate them just a little bit and try to insert my needle as far as I can slide it. And it's gone all the way to there. And it's not about time to do a stitch I need to see it wants to it wants to pull in flat I have to push it out to make sure it's got the right shape and I see that I need a couple more stitches to get it in the right shape yeah you have to constantly monitor the shape of your basket Sometimes it will move on you if you're not paying attention. All right, now for the locking stitch. Okay, so I might have gone. Now for the lock. getting warm out here. 
I may have to relook it. It keeps wanting to push that way, so I have to keep pushing it back so that I can maintain the shape that I want. That's, it's like you're fighting <laughs> the tension of the uh, needles. And that's where that locking stitch is very useful. And I am liking that edge. I think it looks really good. The color choices, it, it gives it a much more finished edge on my basket. So I'm going to continue to work that. I think I'm going to go inside where it's a little cooler and do around to where, where, where I come around to this side. And then I'll show you how I put the two ends together. We have gotten here. and. We need to start bringing these together to join. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use these little clothespins to help kind of hold things in place. So I'm going to have to go underneath and try to catch all of, actually I'm, I'm not going to do it like really tight. I just want to um, get it, I'm going to do some loose stitches just to help hold it all together. And then I'll come back and put it all together. So I'm just going to do some loose, very loose stitches far apart. So you can see just some loose stitches holding those together 
and I only got a couple of pins left to, to help keep its shape. Now this is not attached right here. It is not attached to this. It's all separate. Um, I just wanted to make sure that my gauge is good, that the shape of the basket is good. Now since my I've ended up right here, I'm going to work my way backwards, which means I'm going to have to go underneath and wrapping it tightly. But that's how I get it to be one solid row. You can see how this edge is not attached because I just went around a very loose wrap to hold it together. And since my thread ended up over here, I am going around here, passing my needle through the slot right in here. I finished off my thread. I got as far as I could coming back. And so I just wove it right underneath in here. I'll cut, it'll, it'll get finished off, it'll get wrapped in the wrap so it won't be seen. I am going to trim it just a little bit. Okay, I ended off my thread. I got a new thread. I thought I'd show you how I start a new thread. Now I want my knot, I want my end to show up inside of inside of here. So I'm going to actually just go right through the center of my coil. So I have a tail right there, which is going to get worked into this. It'll be wrapped in. Okay. So I will begin my wrapping. I'm holding on to the tail. I always have to go in the slot because I can't just go around it. I always like to look to make sure I'm going in between the coil. See, this tail is getting wrapped inside. That's my rooster. Here I need to attach it, so I go down to the second coil. Oops. There we go. So I go right into this by the second coil. Pull it through. And then I have to do my locking stitch. So I go over the top between the first coil and the second coil. And then we go around the post. And that secures the top to the bottom. I will do that every place right where I have a stitch so that there won't be a, a gap here no more. Continue with our wrapping.
how that tail right there it's getting caught up inside so we won't have any little ragged ends sticking out they'll be completely encased in the wrap I just have uh, let's see from here to there left go and then I'll be finished I'm just gonna keep going so far it, the rim looks good it is the shape that I wanted so I am pleased with how it's turning out Eating the heat, it's starting to warm up. Strange thing about uh, fall in South Carolina is that the mornings start off cold and chilly, but by the afternoon it gets hot. See, the only part that's not attached is right, right here. Part right here is even the part that's not attached. I'm attaching it as I go. I'm pulling everything in a little tighter. Here's my other end right there. I'm gonna make sure that gets wrapped inside here. Thanksgiving basket. I love the colors and neutral colors. It kind of reminds me of Hershey pie or or Reese's peanut butter cups, the, the two-tone brown. Just a small, cute little basket made with the tie stitch. If you want to learn about the tie stitch, I do have a video on YouTube showing you how to do that. Thanks for watching.